Hello and welcome to the 14th episode of Kerbal Space Endeavor. So, in the last episode, uh, we were almost getting our satellite up into the right position. We were just needing some more time. So, meanwhile, we get the space truck on its course back home. And I want to show that I am capable of getting the truck back and forth because there will be a lot more trips coming up and I don't really want to show all of them because I don't really think that they're that interesting or at least the tip trips are not that interesting. What the trips are for is interesting so I'll just show bits and pieces of the more interesting part. However, I must warn you, this episode has some issues. I had some bugs occurring in the game and with OBS and I lost uh, a lot of footage that I tried to get back, but I really couldn't. So yeah, we got the notification that our probe has its maneuver node coming up. And even though it does only have four kilonewtons of thrust, this thing is actually quite fast around Minmus. And here we complete the second contract. And I thought, hmm, we have now an additional probe flying around Kerbin. Why not set it up a certain way so it is an additional SATCOM for uh, Minmus? So um, we have connection with one of the SATCOMs with the omnidirectional antenna. So we just flipped uh, the other antenna over and now we have an extra thing going around Kerbin. So yeah, we switch back to our space truck with Macman Kerman on board. And yeah, here you see the fast forwarded version of yes, I can get this thing back and forth from Minmus and Kerbin. Moving on, we of course have the space truck in orbit, but we have depleted most of its fuels. So we have to start a new mission to refuel it. And um, yeah, a little bit of a redesign, but this thing will completely fill up all of the liquid hydrogen. So let's jump ahead right here and go right into the docking sequence because the launch sequence is always the same, it always shows the same, so boring, boring stuff. So yeah, we're just going here for docking. A docking, a bouncy docking, there we go. And now it is just a matter of refueling this thing. I use Tech Fuel Balancer for this because it does go a lot faster and it is much more convenient. Now, we don't want to show on the refueling part. However, you saw in the last episode that we did break off one of the photovoltaics. And, well, I thought we have photovoltaics on our launch stage. Why not change them out? And we have a new solar panel ready and able on our space truck. Not that we ever need that much photovoltaics on our space truck, but it is always good to have them. So yeah, here is the next part where we also skipped the launch stage because as I said before, not really interesting. This is a PDU unit of the MKS mod. It has an antenna on board, it has some photovoltaics, but the main point of this thing is it produces electricity. It has a generator on board and therefore will give our base on Minmus power even when we're on the dark side of the planet. So yeah, once again, we jump a little bit ahead with post-editing right into the docking sequence. And we are set and prepped. What is new about this is, you just saw, there's a huge hydrogen tank in the back, or at a better say on the bottom of our base part. And because these base parts are really heavy, they can get up to 32 tons, I need to take additional fuel with me. And it is never good to carry all of those fuel tanks around, so my plan will be to get this fuel tank into an unstable orbit around Minmus and then just let it plunge towards the planet and be destroyed in the process w so we don't have as much garbage flowing around in space. And again, we go here for a fast forward just so we see the interesting part. And yes, here's the decoupling stage. We are in an unstable orbit, so therefore it will crash into Minmus and we will never see it again. And we also have l uh, faster load times because we have less debris flying around. 
Okay, and then we just need to adjust a little bit our orbit and get to the base. And I did this once again with SATCOM because when you get close to things, it makes things easier. So yeah, let's jump ahead once again. And we just decouple, get off this thing slowly but carefully, like a squid in the sea. There we go land on the docking port. Now we fold all of these back in. I did forget at that point that I have action groups, but whatever. So yeah, we just let it slowly tumble over and put it on its side so we don't fall over accidentally again and break off one of our photovoltaics. And yeah, then it is just a matter of getting our mechanical crab, aka the crane, the crane, ugh and we just pick this module up and bring it right over to add it to our base and now you will see why it is important to bring a crane like this for base construction because if we would bring um, like uh, undercarriage for every single piece of equipment I am bringing to Minmus I would actually waste quite a lot of money and this way I do save some money which accidentally I seem to get um, rid of quite fast. So yeah we have successful docking so this space part is complete. We can turn on the lights, put out the photovo photovoltaics and yeah the floodlights are a little bit much so we'll just turn on the internal lights and ooh has a nice glow right there. So yeah, and we have a uh, omnidirectional satellite dish. Well, it's not a dish, it's just an antenna. And that provides our base uh, with a communication back to Kerbin. So yeah, our base has a connection, which is also required by one of our contracts. And yeah, let's get this craft back to Kerbin. And it is time for the next launch. So yeah, here we go. This is a new craft because we have a window of opportunity coming up for a MOHO mission. And we said before, rules are always probed mission before we can do manned missions. So yes, this thing is a satellite and a surveyor one in one vehicle for MOHO. This will fly to MOHO, circle rise into a stable orbit around it, and it will not only give us a nice description of MOHO, it will also work as a long distance communication satellite. So that's the probe body in the front. We have these two satellites on the side, the big dishes that have a long enough range between MOHO and Kerbin to have a connection. And we'll just uh, set this up as SATCOM uh, long distance one for MOHO. Yeah, that, that'll work. Okay. And once again, my UI is flipping out a little bit right there. But it doesn't matter too much. No, it shouldn't matter too much. And yeah. Now the next thing that we need to do is we need to go to our long distance SATCOM around Kerbin and put one of these satellite dishes towards our just recently deployed MOHO satellite because if we just have it as active vessel we will only have connection when we switch to it but we want a permanent connection so we have to adjust both satellite dishes to be looking exactly at each other at any given time. So yeah, we set ourselves up with our MOHO SATCOM to have an encounter. And it is not easy to get to MOHO because it is actually, it doesn't look like that it is that far away, but keep in mind, the closer you get to the sun, the harder it is to get away from it again. And on the same time, it's just orbiting near the sun is always a hard thing to do. And never forget that MOHO has a pretty high inclination, so getting to it is not that easy. 
So yeah, we set ourselves up and put ourselves an alarm clock just in case. And jump ahead back to the space truck, which delivers the next part for our base on Minmus. This time we also brought in one stage a refueling part and the major component that is to be delivered. So we're gonna do two things in just one go and save some additional money, which is actually probably really convenient. So yeah, normal docking procedure with refueling and yeah, semi-interesting because you've seen it before. I, I can dock, I have proven it more or less. Sometimes things go wrong, but not this time, not this time. And once again, tech fuel balancer is the mod that I'm be using here. And um, yeah, we fuel it up and then get this decoupled. However, I did promise you there are things going wrong this episode and here is some material missing. I, I couldn't find it anymore, it didn't work, OBS had kind of a frack up or anything. So we have to jump ahead to where we are already into an encounter with Minmus. Yeah, it's just the way it is. I hope for the next episodes OBS will not be freaking out and actually recording everything that I do want to record. So yeah, we get our alarm clock for our burn for the Moho probe. And we do have enough fuel on board. We do make the first initial burn. We still have to adjust just a little bit our second burn to get into the right position. So you see me fiddling around with precise note to get the setup. And once again, we set ourselves an alarm clock. Now, once again, we jump ahead to the piece that we were just delivering to the to uh, Minmus. That's the word. That's the word that I was looking for. Minmus. Yeah. Um. This is a Kerbitat, and a Kerbitat will have many functions going for us. So the major function for this is that it gives us our Kerbin's living quarters and it has some other capabilities, but I will get to that once the base is completely assembled and then I will explain each and every single one of these modules, what it does and how it works. And hopefully I can do that because this is the first time I am really testing and trying this mod. I have never used it before. I have read the tutorial, but I am not too certain. And we see here we have only 179 days of food, water and oxygen in our base. So in future missions, we need to remember to put this on. And what I wanted to show here is that I have action groups on my space truck and even though we used uh, a Kerbal attachment system to put new um, a new panel on, it still worked with the action group, which was uh, rather surprising for me. So yeah, this is the next thing for Minmis Base. The, this is the aeroponics bay which will help us uh, put carbon dioxide into oxygen and uh, grow food. And once again, we have a docking sequence where we refuel our craft and put everything in as needed. Then we undock and dock again because I forgot to put in monopropellant, business as usual. And then we just pick up our cargo and head on off to Minmus. So yeah, we skip the whole flight because yay, it's boring. And fly off right away. This time Macmon Kerman does not get out because our crane is actually uh, able to be remotely controlled. So we get to our nice little crane right here, pick things up and move them over. However, the sad part is that um, once again, 
OBS was weird and kind of not worked with my recordings and I fear that this material is lost. So this is also why this episode is a little bit cut short. I'm really sorry for this guys. I will give you some nice cool shots for the next episode. However, my name is Antilles. Thank you and stay tuned till next time. <laughs>